Okay, so the keynote. So you're going to see, as, as I move through some of these slides, you're going to see uh, down the bottom we've got Watch Online at. So Microsoft started this a couple of years ago with, um, with MMS, and they now do it with TechEd and most of their big public conferences, whereby all of the sessions and keynotes um, are, are uploaded to the Channel 9, the official Microsoft Channel 9 site. So fantastic resource for um, yourselves or uh, anybody on your team. Um, to, to be able to go to and download these sessions all year. We still have access to the MMS 2011 and 2012 sessions, so it's not something that's only there for a few months and that they take down. Um, so again, you know, don't, I, I would say probably don't worry too much about jotting down URLs because I'm going to compress you know, the guts of a week's worth of, um, of sessions into this uh, hour and maybe 10 minutes. So don't worry too much about jotting down URLs. Dave is going to give out the, um, the PowerPoints and each one of these decks here will have links to each of the sessions. Okay, so System Center. So I asked the question earlier on, I won't ask it again. I'll just go briefly through and explain what System Center is because the Microsoft Management Summit, unlike TechEd, which is Microsoft's you know, larger conference, the Management Summit primarily focuses on systems management and you know, has transitioned over to uh, private and public cloud technologies. Um, it doesn't, you know, there, there'd be no exchange, there'd be maybe very little SQL, stuff like that. So it's all focused around systems management. And the System Center 2012 suite of products um, delivers, you know, systems management across your private cloud, if you want. And, you know, I won't go into the definition of a private cloud. You know, we hear, we hear, you hear the term cloud a lot out, out there. But, you know, in some way, shape or form, if you guys have centralized resources, then you have at least part of a private cloud implementation and certainly you know if you're licensed for system center or if the licensing costs are not too prohibitive i.e you're not a small business and um, for a system center the full suite then um, this can really save you time and um, hopefully money as well in the long run as an investment so system center um, is a suite of i'll say anywhere between seven and nine products depending on who you ask microsoft have previewed or released a couple of products that are based up in the cloud they may or may not kind of push forward with them but you know, without talking specific products, if we have a look at the different solutions, if you like, from this slide that System Center can deliver to your environment. So as well, it's important to note, when you buy System Center, so if you have Windows Server, and then you say, okay, Windows Server, Hyper-V, you know, even VMware, you mean it's completely heterogeneous. If you buy these products and you then say, I wanna take my systems management to the next level. So you're looking at, what do I need to do? I want to get System Center in, but hang on, maybe you know I only need monitoring, or maybe I only need backup or data protection or antivirus. If you're looking at System Center as one single solution or one single product, then you know potentially it's going to be cost prohibitive. Licensing has come down quite significantly though, hasn't it? But again, if you're looking at it just as one single solution, like if you're comparing, say, the monitoring piece, you know, to Nagios, which essentially is free if, if you don't get support with it, or you know, your antivirus or your your backups or whatever like that, it's it's not going to be very cost effective. But if you think of System Center as 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 a product set that complements 100% the Windows Server 2012 and 2008 um, stack then you can start seeing the value and, and bringing home the, the transparency uh, of management that you need um, across your IT environment. So, in a nutshell, one of the key features, this is actually a slide that I got from uh, the keynote from last year at the Microsoft Management Summit, so MMS 2012. But I think it's a really useful tool, or, or a slide rather, to um, show people what exactly you can get, just one small piece of System Center, what you can get um, when we're talking about systems management. So we had a quick conversation earlier on here about, um, you know, I was talking about distributed applications in, in you know, the, the monitoring piece, which is SCOM or, or System Center Operations Manager. So um, distributed applications, essentially what that is, is that's IT service modeling. So what you're doing is you're looking at your, your IT services that you guys have responsibility for um, as IT pros or IT admins or even IT consultants for your customers. And you're looking at your IT services individually and breaking down each of the components that make up that service. You're then having a look at, at you know, a, a way of managing those services in the same method or way that your end users consume them. What I mean by that, I always go back to the Exchange one, and we spoke earlier about Exchange. So if you have, um, if, if you have a user who has a smartphone and they have email on their phone, okay, they're consuming that email. 
service, if you like, purely by the fact that it's up, it's down, or there's an issue with it, a performance issue with it. So they may send an email to someone, that email doesn't go, it's down. That email goes immediately, it's up. That email takes 10 minutes or 60 minutes to get to their intended um, recipient, then there's a performance issue. They don't care about the network devices that are sitting out in the, the data center or the SAN that's running the exchange servers or the fact that the CAS array has fallen over or the CERT hasn't been put in, whatever those, comp those components are. They don't care. So what System Center allows us to do is it allows us to take that service, in this case here, the top level service, and organize that service um, into, into all of its subcomponents, if you like, as a, as a single top level entity. And once we do that, we can very quickly then say, right, if there's a problem with that service, we just need to know, is it red for down, green for up, or yellow for a performance issue or in a warning state? Okay? This is one small component or piece of system center that you can deliver to every single service that you have responsibility for in your environment. So simple. And what this does here is this just tells us very quickly in this instance here, that we've got an issue with the network. And we can do that with System Center Operations Manager. We can do that with one click of a button. And I'm not messing when I say that. One click of a button. It's called a problem path. When we build our distributed applications and we model our IT services, when we put them together and we put them up onto a dashboard or we can integrate them into SharePoint or Visio or whatever, we can click one button and we can get that answer straight away. So what we've done as IT managers or admins or consultants is we've just hit one button and we've managed that service in the same way that our end user who looks at their email on, from their phone and that, who hasn't sent, been able to send a mail, and we've looked at that and we've then ascertained straight away it's down and there's the problem. Okay, the network guys are going to probably need to dig a little bit deeper, whatever, you know, it's not going to go off and immediately fix the problem on that one component. Certainly System Center can do that if we start going down the orchestration and the automation route. But from that one small piece, it's a really, really useful tool. So back to Brad's keynote. So uh, what, what Microsoft are trying to push, and, and there's, like, there's, a, there's an undercurrent going across the, the whole MMS, um, the whole week at MMS, where we're talking about you know, the application. So when, we're, when I talk about app, I'm talking about the IT service. Or, you know, or, and it's every component that, or if you like, every entity that manages that, whether that be the operational team. So I'm an IT pro slash consultant. I'm not a dev. Um, but you know, I certainly need to know at certain at certain pieces if I've built my service together. If it's a line of business application, for example, that we've built in house, and um, then you know we need to know if the .NET code, for example, or if the whatever code it's built on that's um, that we're presenting out to our end users, we need to know that that's performing the way it should be, and System Center can deliver that. But what Microsoft have seen with System Center and Windows Server is that you know there's, there's new social patterns like so applications are being spun up quicker and faster and you know using different methods and there's so many different teams now involved in delivering applications to the business. Data explosion. So you know this particular feature. You know we all know. I, I remember it, I'm working. Dave mentioned NT4 earlier. I'm working in IT since NT3, 3.1 I think. So. You know, I remember looking at a server a long, long time ago, and it had, I think it had um, a, a, a 60 megabyte or 30 megabyte hard disk or whatever. I remember thinking, we'll never, never, ever use that up. Never. <laughs> now we're talking about petabytes. You know, we're, we're, when we're looking at servers, and okay, we're in Ireland, I can understand, we're, it, it'll be a long time before some of us see petabytes in our, in our organization. However, we're now talking about petabytes, and that kind of data explosion for environments is just happening across the globe regardless of whether you live in a small country or you live over in the states you know where you see these huge enterprises consumerization of IT so again John is going to talk about that later on but consumerization of IT is it's happening like these are buzzwords that we've heard for years but it is happening it's you know people are taking their their devices you know they're using if they're using direct access like was demonstrated yesterday that's in the business the business has control of that but also if they've got you know their iPads or their Android devices they need to be managed if the end users want to get access to uh, the company or corporate resources so system center and windows server can deliver that kind of direct and centralized management um, across your environment and then build it into a cloud computing model whether that be private cloud or public cloud, and um, it can all just link in together, and it's kind of the 
the life cycle, if you like, that Microsoft see um, the, the data and application management going? Pardon? So, no, you're grand. So, heard of MMS. So, these are just a couple of quotes that um, that I heard on some videos or some you know people talking about, and I just thought they were quite apt. And I just said I throw them in. These were last minute slide. So, you know, yesterday's crazy is today's normal. That's so true. Again, when I mentioned petabytes, you know, if you were talking to people. Over here, you know, if you said to me a few years ago, yeah, cloud, you know, everyone's going to be going into cloud and, you know, you as an IT pro, you're going to be learning cloud and you're going to be going up into Microsoft or whatever, I wouldn't believe them. I think, well, I've, you know, I've no, no need to go into cloud. Like, you know, we're here in Ireland, we're happy enough with our on-premise SANS and our on-premise iSCSI or fiber channel um, storage solutions and, you know, I'm never going up there. However, for me now as a consultant, I'm now starting to ramp up into Windows Azure. Not because Microsoft make me, but because that's where I see my career going, or at least touching off. Not from a development perspective, but certainly from an administration perspective. And I've got one or two sessions that um, I'll run through quickly towards the end of this deck that, um, that will probably give you a flavor for, for the, the, the reason for that. Um, IT pros are now closer to the business and the goals of the company. So, you know, this is going back to IT service modeling and, and also to talk a little bit about the DevOps thing that we're, I'll, I'll mention now shortly. You know, it's, it's more and more important that, you know, as an IT pro or whoever, or as a person who has responsibility for the, the corporate IT environment, that you now start talking to C-level or, you know, senior management level about service level agreements, whether you like it or not. You know, SLAs can help you. If you're not implementing SLAs or if you're planning on implementing them, they can go both ways. So an SLA doesn't have to be somebody beating you with a stick saying, you're not meeting our 99.999% uptime that we all agreed. It can go the other way. If you are meeting that, great. You know, give me a bonus. If you're not meeting it because you can target System Center at a particular service and you're not meeting your SLA, you can always go back to senior management and say, look, you know, for years I've been telling you that that kit is, is out of date or we need to spend money on this SAN or, or we need to, you know, move away from the other crowd to Hyper-V for whatever reason, you know, um, whatever. Most of the time if you're going in, you know, cap in hand just asking for budget, you know, depending on your boss, it's going to be hard to get. Whereas if you can go in with a, a, you know, a valid report over, you know, not just over a week, I mean, you can do it over a year if you want, you can say, look, or you can do it over peak times, just on the fly. You know, you can use data warehouses and system center in Ops Manager or Service Manager. You can use the, the information that's stored in those databases to run really, really granular reports around availability and uptime on, on any component that you have managed in, in your environment. So be very useful. So, you know, th th that comment is, is definitely kind of striking for me and, and it's, it's thought provoking as well if you think about it and you think how how closer, if you're not already that close to your boss in terms of being able to validate, you know, why you need budget or why you don't need budget, well, you know, System Center can certainly deliver that for you.